Next question is from Omar MBA1. You often make the distinction between mobility and the traditional end range, passive and static stretches. Do you see any benefit in static stretches? When would they be prescribed over mobility work? Yeah, yeah. you know, I'll tell you a huge benefit of static stretching. That we programmed I, them in Prime. But Yeah, we, we did. Uh, but I'll tell you an interesting uh, thing that I noticed from static stretching that I used to recommend to some of my clients, and now I'm noticing it even with myself. The way that static stretching works is, so you get into a stretch and you hold it, right? This is traditional stretching. So I'll get in a hamstring stretch and I'll hold it for 30 seconds, some people a minute or longer. And what you'll notice is while you're holding the stretch, the muscle starts to loosen up and lengthen because that's the central nervous system saying we can relax, uh, we need to not be so tight, allow mm -hmm. this muscle to, in, to in, elongate, right? Now, the benefit of that is it relaxes your central nervous system. Static stretching before bed, and, and now it depends on the person. If I'm dealing with someone who's hypermobile and doesn't have good like strength and stability, I'm not going to have them do any static stretching. But if I'm working with the average person and they have issues with like sleep and stuff, yeah, and they're like tense, do you know 30 minutes of static stretching and watch your CNS just overall calm down and relax. I've been doing this at night and getting better sleep, so that's one interesting benefit from static stretching. Yeah, I like to I like to use static stretches if I've had a really hard workout and I get tight. I feel this tightness throughout the workout and I feel like it's something that I really need to, you know, address at the end of the workout and also why the end of the workout because I'm trying to get into the parasympathetic state. I'm trying to calm everything down yeah. and so uh, to apply something that uh, is more passive versus like active where I'm, you, you know, trying to calm the central nervous system down. I want to start going through that by doing static stretches because it does help you to breathe slower, helps you to kind of like relax in these positions and then form into these positions. So, uh, you know, these muscles can, can calm down. So they're not so tense. Post-workout. This is where it's um, amazing and ideal. I think that I, and I would prefer it even over mobility. And it's not to say that Mobility doesn't work there also and wouldn't uh, have its application. But I just think that's your to your point, Justin, you're trying to calm the central nervous system down. You're trying to relax. You've already had the hard workout. Mm -hmm. Now I want to chill and I want to recover. So to that point, uh, before you go to bed, maybe when I'm watching TV at nighttime, I'll get down and just relax and sit in a 90-90. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm not actually moving through it. So it's uh, it still has value. I think that the the main thing that we wanted to address with static stretching was that it was it was poorly used in the past, like a, a before like a, a workout. Yeah, like I mean, we're, we're talking about uh, watching TV before you go to bed and after workout. All times when you want to chill out, yeah. relax, be calm, turn yeah. muscles down. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And, and chill. You saw you would see people doing this, and my biggest pet peeve was coaches that were doing it with athletes before they get ready for a soccer you game. You want to turn muscles up. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're, you're, you're getting ready to have these kids sprint all over a soccer field and you're doing these one minute long, you know, hamstring stretches and holds. It's like, you don't want to calm down right before that. You want them to move better. Yes. So doing something like mobility work far more superior in that situation, but post game or post workout, uh, to relax and still get benefits of stretching, a uh, great time to now, do it. Now, here's where you may see some exceptions to that rule. To of, get into something? Yeah, yeah. like um, let's say I'm working on overhead mobility with a client, and the thing that's really getting in the way is their super tight lats. So it's hard for me to even get them in that position to activate the muscles I want because the lats are so tight. That's a good point. So then what I'll do is a static stretch on the lats, get the lats to chill out, get out of the way, and then I can activate the muscles in that new range of motion to improve uh, mobility. Static stretching also has studies that show that it builds muscle. Now, it's not a great muscle builder, but when you first start doing it, there's this initial muscle building effect you get, then, then you don't Those really are all the same anymore. studies that yoga people like to tout to, to yeah. prove that yoga builds yeah. muscle. Yeah, no. <laughs> it, it, now, it, it, you'll build muscle if you're activating and doing all that stuff, but just static stretching by itself has this little short window of muscle building. And what's funny is bodybuilders for a long time, some bodybuilders would advocate for really deep static stretching in between sets or after the workouts and they notice better pumps and more muscle and that kind of stuff. So there is an interesting, you know, kind of effect there. But yeah, as, as far as static stretching being used as a warm up, generally not a great idea. I like it at the end of a workout. And by the way, you mentioned something, Justin, about breathing and calming down. I learned this years ago from a young lady that I worked with who was very, very, she she was very knowledgeable on this. 
and she would see me getting these static stretches and I'd grit my teeth and hold my breath. And, yes. and yes. she's like, do you really think your central nervous system is going to calm down with you tensing up and holding your breath? And I was like, oh, you're totally right. right. She's like, calm everything down and breathe so the CNS is getting lots of signals that say it can relax and allow this muscle to elongate. And it was a game changer for me. Yeah, belly breathing, diaphragmatic breathing. Like If you're holding this tense position for so long, you're going to keep carrying that stress and it's going to keep perpetuating that. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.